TTRPG rules. Sure, we use them, but do they really matter? I don't know. Let's talk about that. Greetings and welcome to Elder Goblin Games, the universalist TTRPG channel where the DCs are made up and the stats don't matter. So I've had this idea for a bit about stealing my favorite rules from each role-playing game that I own. So why not start out with a game that just won four separate innies, Shadow Dark. I keep seeing a lot of videos going around that say things like, Shadow Dark, is it really worth all the hype? And the short answer is yes. I think it is. Not only because it boils down a lot of old school style play into the most important essentials. Important essentials? but I think it's deserving of the title it has right now as one of the most popular independent role-playing games. Let's just crack this bad boy open and take a look. First off, the art is next level. I mean, just look at this. I could talk about how stitched right into the binding are the basic rules for the game. I could talk about the amazing art that carries on throughout the entire book. I could talk about how character creation is a breeze and takes literally minutes instead of hours, like most popular modern games. Rolling for feats instead of selecting from long lists of subcategories. Or the fact that entire classes fit on a two-page spread. And I think at this point everyone and their brother has heard that torches are tracked in real time. So what then am I going to talk about in this video? And while I think all those things are highlights to Shadow Dark, there are a dozen other channels that are going to cover those things better than I will. So instead, I'm going to cheat a little bit and talk about a less focused on part of Shadow Dark. The Game Master section. Hopefully I won't have to blur these pages later. <laughs> Time to break out your favorite dwarven ale, kick up your feet, and throw another log on the Yule Fire. Because I'm going to do some reading. Okay, yeah, I can hear it already. Maybe this isn't technically mechanical advice, but this advice here is so evergreen that it deserves mentioning because it could be used in any tabletop role-playing game. I don't care if it's OSR, NSR, or my own personal brand, QPR. Let's just go through a little bit here. The Game Master. That's probably you. You are the deadly pit trap and the assassin in the night. You are the storm, the army, the gods. You hold ultimate power, yet you only want one thing to see your players triumph. I know it sounds really simple, but that advice could be pinned to your GM screen for any game. Yeah, we can get caught up in wearing a lot of different hats as game masters, but I think what's important is that we focus on the true intention of our role, to see your players triumph. This sort of encapsulates the mantra of the book. I wanna read The Pact. You and your players are gaming together to have fun, prop each other up, and strengthen bonds. This is The Pact. The pact is often unspoken and unseen, but always felt. It is based on goodwill, respect, and fellowship. Friends, Romans, concubines, write this on your GM screen. This could be the first sentence in every tabletop role-playing game book. The pact is goodwill, fellowship, and respect. If you have that at your table, things are going to go a lot smoother. Let's continue. Its enemies are selfishness, antagonism, and arrogance. Unfortunately, there is a lot of antagonism and arrogance in this hobby. And a lot of times, it just comes with the territory. For a long time, the role of the GM tended to be an antagonistic one. And I'm sure there were great GMs out there that naturally gravitated to a more uplifting style of play. But for every good egg out there, there were half a dozen bad eggs. Decisions made to defend the pact are always good ones. Moving on to the player's side of advice. I really like this bit of advice here on dramatic questions. Most encounters have a simple yes-no question driving the interest. When that question is answered, the encounter is no longer exciting to the players, and it's time to move forward. Remember, dramatic questions are not always obvious. The question for the encounter with a troll guarding a bridge is not whether the characters can kill the troll, but whether they can get across. A lot of times in old school style games, we end up doing things like rolling random encounters. And while that's all well and good, it's important to ask, is there a dramatic question to this encounter? If the answer is no, why do it? Consider the dramatic question or the tension that's being built by the situation you're creating. The core ethos. Now there's a couple of headings here, but I'm just going to go over a few of them. Time. The most important resource. It must haunt the character's every decision. They don't have time to search every floor tile for a trap. 
I think this is where things can really get bogged down in a game of this style. If you're letting your players hex crawl around an entire map, but you're not putting a time pressure on them, then the emphasis of what's important will be lost. Darkness. Respect the darkness. It is the true foe. Few things can hold it at bay, and nothing must make those prized tools obsolete. Darkness plays an important role in Shadow Dark, and it's important not to forget that as a GM. Now, a lot of games out there have things like In for Vision or Dark Vision, but there are many ways that you can still make darkness matter and challenge your players. Whether that's magical darkness, having reasons to still light up a torch and look around at details, or having enemies be drawn to the sight of a torch from a distance. Make darkness great again. Uh, okay, no. This sounds really basic and like it goes without saying, but gear. Gear is precious and limited. Give value and utility to all of it. How often do your players just glaze over all the gear that's on their character sheet and never use it? Make that grappling hook and rope important to scaling walls or crossing caverns. Use crowbars constantly. Hammer and pittons? Pitons? Pittons? I don't know. Use those. Okay. If you hear nothing else from this video, hear this. Information. Dispense information freely. If the characters test the floor where there's a trap, they find it. It's that simple. This is a lesson I had to learn the hard way. When I first started GMing, I used to hide every bit of information behind skill checks and rolls. I would find out sometimes mid-scene or session that the characters really needed that bit of information, and then the players would be mad at me, the GM, for not simply telling them something that their character should have known based on the situation they were placed in. This tiny little guideline, just two sentences, is fundamental to the trust between the player and the GM. Dispense information freely. Okay, two more things I want to go over in this video. I might focus more on like one to three rules in some of these other videos, but this GM section just had so much evergreen advice that I thought it was worth mentioning because it could be used in literally any game. Hey, while you're here, make sure to like and subscribe, maybe even leave a comment and let me know what game I should talk about next. I've got a few on the shelf over here that I really want to get to. Rewarding investment. Honor what has been earned. If a character learns a new language, make it matter. Allow new titles and iconic deeds to have an impact on the character's lives. One of the coolest things about Shadow Dark is that as you gain levels as different classes, you also earn new titles depending on your alignment. I would urge you to really lean into this idea of titles no matter what game you're playing. If players gain renown for the deeds they've accomplished, good or bad, that gives them impact on the world. And that impact, in turn, will create investment for those players at your table. This will communicate to your players that this is not just some video game and they're not just riding a roller coaster through your world, but that their actions actually matter and that they should be invested in this game and in this world. Okay, I had to throw this one in there because I just really love it. Be unpredictable. Choose chaos. In this book, more than a few words are spent explaining the typical amount of treasure or the average build of a monster. But typical and average adventuring is not the goal. These numbers are calibrations, so you know where to start. Use them to feel out the rudder of your game and know what makes something easy or hard. And here it is. Then become unpredictable. All right, here's another sentence to highlight in your book. If your players think they can win every fight, they won't feel fear, they won't be careful, they won't use their wits. That is the essence of role-playing games like D&D. Using your wits, not just what's written on your character sheet. That is where investment and interesting roleplay happens. When the players are challenged by things they didn't expect. When you flip a monster's stat block on its head and add a curveball they didn't see coming. Goblins that shoot lasers out of their eyes? Come on. Goblins with jetpacks? For the love of the gods, old and new, don't send plain old goblins at your players. Spice it up. Turn the weird to 11. Take a page out of DCC's book. Put some weird pants on them. I don't know, just do something. All right, I digress. I'll read the rest of this part. If all treasure is similar in value, there will be no epic trophies to pursue. No motivations. Instead, fill your world with stark, dangerous, and stunning treasures. The most glorious victories are the hard-earned ones. This is like the Dark Souls principle. Yeah, it may have been a difficult fight, but that sweet taste of victory after you slay that demon is like nothing else. Okay, one more and then we'll wrap things up. Telegraph danger. Once you remove predictability, you'll want to add a replacement ingredient, telegraphing danger. 
Don't make threats a secret unless the players utterly fail to gather information. If the characters are getting close to a manticore's cave, describe the crushed skulls and bones, the reek of rotting meat, and the silence of the birds. I think this is a reason a lot of players avoid old school style games, is because GMs aren't properly telegraphing the danger. Instead, there's a lot of gotcha moments where the traps are sprung, the damage is dealt, and the player has really no choice in the matter. There are moments for those sort of things, but really, a game without choice isn't much of a game at all. I was listening to an interview with Yochai Gal, the creator of Cairn, and I heard him say that Candyland is the worst game ever made. In Candyland, you roll dice and you make no choices whatsoever. All the things that happen to you in that game are random. You don't get to decide if you're going left or right. You just follow the path you're on, roll dice, and hope to the gods for the best outcome. I don't think that's a game. GMs, if your game feels like Candyland, you need to make some changes, and this book has some great suggestions for that. Check out Shadow Dark. Really read that GM section. It's chock full of great GM advice, and it's not a long read. Each sentence in this book is carefully pruned and not full of fluff. It will tell you exactly what you need to hear, and nothing more. Why aren't all TTRPG books more like this? Okay, before we go, one last thing, I promise. Choice matters. A choice between two identical options, which door do you open, the one to the left or the one to the right, is not actually a choice. Players need a way to gather information about their options and make an informed decision. That creates interesting choices. Careful players should be able to find the deep claw marks on one of the doors or catch the low snoring on the other side. There it is, information. It's so key to running the game. Okay, there's definitely a lot more I could talk about here, but I'll save some for another video. I hope this advice has helped. It's really not even my own. It's just the things I really like from Shadow Dark. I know this was supposed to be about more mechanical things, but I hope you enjoyed the video anyway. Hey, while you're here, don't forget to like, subscribe, maybe leave a comment even. Talk about what you like about Shadow Dark. Okay, that's probably it for today. Let me know what you think of this series, what games I should get into next. I've got a few already queued on the shelf here, but if there are games that you don't see on here that you think I should talk about, leave a comment, let me know. If I have them, I'll try to get to them soon. I already have a few ideas for Index Card RPG, Mouse Raider, Mazes, Worlds Without Number, and Savage Worlds. Hey you, thanks for watching. And remember, make mistakes, choose chaos, and most importantly, have fun. The shadows are dark in the dungeon. The shadows are dark in the forest. The shadows are dark. Take heart and embark. For the road is darker yet ahead. The journey is long and untrodden The path is all but forgotten So take heart, face your quest For your metal they'll test And a hero you'll be at journey's end A hero you'll be at journey's end